are they viewing making changes to their portfolio given that there is not complete certainty about tax reform or other policies? Um, and how do they view their portfolios right, right. now? So our members are entrepreneurs who over their lifetime have had to have discipline to delay gratification and build reserves. So our members carry about 12 percent in cash. So over our 50 billion in assets, it's about 10 billion. That allows them to weather a storm and to pounce on an opportunity when it's available. So part of their strategy is kind of barbell. A lot of security at one end with lots of cash and then risk assets on the other end. But even the risk assets, only 20 percent, as I say, are in public equity, because in the private equity and real estate, you can roll up your shirt sleeves and really work the asset yourself. So you're much more immune to some of the market forces that will sweep the public markets up and down. How do you find your investors actually, or your, your members, members right. do as investors? Because historically, entrepreneurs are not necessarily good investors when it comes to investing in other people's businesses. So you mentioned I've just written the bo a book that came out last week on entrepreneurs and on our members. And one of the great findings is entrepreneurs are a completely different breed than <laughs> investors. An entrepreneur is passionate about what they're working on. They tend to milk one opportunity for 30 years. Any investor that did that would be out of business, they'd be swamped. So an investor is much more dispassionate and they have a portfolio and they're willing to liquidate at this price, this price, and this price. There's some other areas where entrepreneurs are very different, wildly optimistic, but it's in the eyes of the beholder. So some of their optimism is well founded by their unique skills ability to delay gratification that's a huge one most most people when you have a successful entrepreneur their friends are living a good life in their 20s and 30s they're saving for a rainy day so when their corporation or their business hits a problem they have the ability to do it i talk about george heisel in my book who's in the medical field and every once in a while medicare can come in and stop the whole deal and six months of revenue is put on hold. Unless you know how to save for that rainy day, you're out of business. So entrepreneurs have delayed gratification, wild optimism. Grit actually beats IQ. There's a lot of studies from Angela Duckworth from the University of Pennsylvania about grit really uh, being more important. So when one ladder is falling, a good entrepreneur is jumping to the next ladder, mm -hmm. and they seem to just keep going and going and going. They're like the ever-ready bunny. Mm -hmm. Investors are much more dispassionate. They bring a completely different skill set. And at Tiger, what we're doing is transferring from the successful entrepreneur area. You know, you sell a business, you have a thousand employees, and the next day you don't have anybody laughing at your jokes anymore because you have no more employees. What, 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 give us some tips about becoming a better entrepreneur. You've, you've, <clears throat> you've met and, and worked with so many. So, and it's different than the reality TV version of an entrepreneur. Totally, totally. Uh, so our members are not so much from high technology. They're making hamburgers and they're selling medical devices and they're providing services. Uh, one is uh, mentors. If you take 100 successful people in any business endeavor, the 50 that are most successful have mentors in their life. The 50 that are least successful have excuses why they don't have mentors in their life. Uh, the ability to be optimistic and jump. Luck tends to favor those who are ready and willing to take the risk. The great entrepreneur makes themselves ready and willing to take the risk. Yeah, I agree with him. Uh, the def my definition of luck is where opportunity and preparation merge exactly. together because that's what we have to be as entrepreneurs and, and be willing to have that deferred gratification. We make our own luck. Yes, we do. Don't we? Exactly. Yes, we do. If you stay in the game long enough and, and you have your powder dry and you're good at what you do, the opportunity is going to present itself and you just have to have those resources to, to capitalize on them and, and, of course, see them when they present yeah. themselves. My partner said the deal of a lifetime comes across your desk every week. You just have to be looking for it. Yeah. Well said. I like that. Well said. True. Tiger 21, really interesting company there. Michael, thank you very much. Thank good you. To see you, sir. Michael Sonnenfeld there. Coming